Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first webinar for 2020. We're glad that you could join us today. As usual, we'd like to start with some useful instructions. During the presentation, you will be asked to participate in some polls. You can select the answer directly in the pop-up window, which will appear in your screen. You may also ask questions using the chat box. Our speaker will be happy to address uh, all these questions at the end of the presentation. The recording will be made available after the live presentation too. Now, let's introduce our speakers for today's webinar, Diana Saniki and Kerry Moosman. With more than one decade working on the marketing for the international formwork company, DOCA, Diana has extensive experience building and managing successful marketing programs. Her strengths include using innovative marketing techniques, as well as proven ability to track results and demonstrate return on investment. Diana oversees DOCA's participation in and marketing for the largest U.S. construction trade shows. Kerry brings a long history of work with the construction industry, with previous experience as a construction magazine editor. She works with AOE clients to help promote their products and technologies through targeted public relations, including industry articles and social media. Welcome, Kerry and Diana. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kerry. I want to start by welcoming, welcoming you to Trade Show Storytelling. Today, Diana will take you through the very steps to make your booth more effective at any trade show. Diana has extensive experience at trade show marketing, and I know her methods will really resonate with you. But before we begin, we have a couple quick poll questions for you. Tony, could you start the first poll, please? Okay, if you could please take a moment and just answer these questions. Okay, that's good. All right, we have 43% said, no, I thought I was just supposed to show up at my booth. I didn't construct a theme. And 57% said, I always plan out a clear message for each trade show. So, okay, so we have a, uh, the majority try to plan out a message, but it's still, it's close to 50-50. So, okay, Tony, let's go for the next poll now. Next poll, poll now. Sure. Okay, if you could take a few moments and answer this poll. Wow, okay. Okay. All right, this one's interesting. We have 57% say we try to concentrate our message into one to three specific areas. Then the other three questions are equal at 14%. I'm lucky if I thought of a theme. I normally have just one focus area or I include all our new products regardless of theme or focus. So um, interesting, that's really split among those three. But the majority of people are trying to concentrate a message in a, in a specific area. So, great, great, thank you. Okay, Diana, on to you. Okay, thank you, Carrie. Um, thank you. Today, I would like to share with you some ideas and best practices that we've been using to implement successful trade shows over the last 12 years through storytelling. Uh, here's a quick summary of what we will cover today from beginning to end. Uh, first, we're going to talk about theme. Why is it important? How do you develop one? Then we're going to define some focus areas to using your communication and your presentation. Uh, we're going to develop uh, or talk to you about how to develop a story for each of those focus areas. Uh, communication, how are we going to communicate? Uh, your story through different channels and mediums, uh, booth design, how to make it memorable, and follow-up, what do you do after the show? We, get, we, begin, we begin with the first step of planning your strategy for your trade show booth. It's important to have a specific theme 
and a focus for your booth. The theme should reflect your products and how they align with the current needs in the industry. Diana will tell you about the beginning or pre-planning stage, which is the foundation of your story. Diana? So you have a trade show that's set in your calendar and you have to start planning for it. Uh, an example of this for us would be Con Expo. Uh, I'm gonna use a lot of examples to this show to kind of talk to all, through all these points um, today. Uh, so Con Expo is one of the largest trade shows in North America. It's held once every three years. There's over 20, 20, 2,800 exhibitors, which is equivalent to about 50 football fields. It's going to be our third time attending the show, uh, and it's, it's a huge show. So how do we, how do we get attention, and how do, we, how do we get people to come see us uh, at our booth? Uh, that, this is how we kind of begin to structure our story. Uh, so first step in structuring your story is a theme. It's basically the title of your movie. It's the title of your, of your exhibition. Uh, theme is the context of what you want to say. How do you want your attendees to feel when they step in your booth? Your goal here is to present your value proposition in a way that connects with people's emotions. So many companies might think their logo and their colors uh, are, are their brand or their theme, but uh, branding and theme goes well beyond that. To set a proper theme, you want to identify first, you know, with, with, your, with your, your staff, with your, with your managers, with, you know, uh, what are your business goals? What are your marketing objectives and what are your targets to determine what we're, what's going to work as the best theme for, for your booth? I like to define theme as almost the soul of your booth. It should be something simple, easy to, easy to remember, and it really should encompass your brand as a whole. Um, some people ask, does theme help drive sales at, uh, at, a, at a show? Uh, well, according to Meetings and Conventions magazine, 71% of meeting planners typically incorporate a theme for major events and conferences, and about 50% agree that a theme does enhance a special, a special event or a trade show. Once you have a theme, where do you incorporate it? Basically everywhere. Your booth graphics should be show, showing your theme uh, in, in all your communication, uh, which we'll talk about more in the next slide should, should show your theme. Um, when, when you select a theme for your booth, you wanna make sure it suits your brand. Branding is a key element of any theme you choose. So you shouldn't just pick a theme and run with it. Consider how are you gonna integrate that in your key messages, in your products, uh, in your product displays. Um, you wanna make sure that uh, you know wh whatever theme you're, you, you pick, it, it really, resonates in, in everything and in everything you're doing. So to give you an example, uh, we had a theme um, that we, we were trying to figure out for our Con Expo participation. And you know, we, we met with our with our team leaders here and we talked about, okay, uh, you know, we're we're not just a formwork equipment supplier. We're beyond that. We have a lot of engineering services that we do. We have a lot of uh, field service. We have a lot of new digital technology, so it's it's not just formwork. It's we're going beyond that. So this was kind of how we started to organize what could be our theme for for the trade show, and and with that we came up with the slogan uh, that was very simple, uh, but it helped us basically sum up our theme. Uh, we went with this more than formwork, and uh, we 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 decided to use it as a hashtag. Uh, you, you don't have to use a hashtag for your theme. Uh, for us, it, 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 it made sense for our, our communication. Um, and, and yeah, so that's basically how we kind of came up with our theme. We went from, it's not just formwork, it's DOCA. We're trying to show a lot more that we offer besides just the equipment. And we summed it into this hashtag, more than formwork. So it's, a, it's important to kind of identify uh, you know, where your company is at before you can uh, develop a theme, like what, what are you trying to really communicate? And then just think of something that's gonna fit your brand and, and something that's gonna be easily remembered to communicate. Uh, just uh, another example to give you, one that I really like is, is from Caterpillar. Um, Caterpillar for Con Expo, uh, they're doing this theme, Your Work Matters. That's their theme. Three, three words, simple, 
it, it's, it's it kind of a little bit of emotion there. Your work matters. And, and they decided on that theme because they're basically paying tribute to those building the world's infrastructure. And they, they, they use this, this kind of theme as the umbrella uh, that will communicate all the other points uh, in, their, in their booth. Uh, so once you have that theme, that, that's like the top of the iceberg, you want to start building some focus areas. Uh, so we have a big booth, and we fill it up with a lot of different equipment and services. Um, but, you know, if you start telling anyone more than three things that you're exhibiting at the show, they're not going to remember that. We will be lucky if they remember one out of three. So my rule is no more than three focus areas. It could be one, it could be two, but just like a, our, our own little rule here is let, let's not focus on, on more than three, three areas. Um, so here's a little small chart I created. I think will help you think of those focus areas and help you develop a story that will later create some ideas on how you can in incorporate your focus areas into your booth and into your uh, communication in like an engaging matter. Uh, so for, first thing we have is, is what is the hook? And, and I'll show you some examples of uh, how, how we came up with, with our uh, stories or our fo focus areas. So first you want, to, you want to ask yourself, okay, I have this product or I have this service, what could be the hook or what, what's the main communication point? So you don't want to just say, hey, we have this new product as, as, as kind of your hook. You, you want it to be almost a question, something to pull in your audience or uh, to make them engage. So one, one hook we came up with was for our product. We're showing this new slab formwork system at our booth. It's called SuperDeck. We just launched this this year. And you know, one reason to participate at this show was, was for this product. Uh, so we, we, that's definitely one of our focus areas. So we developed, okay, how are we gonna uh, introduce this or what's gonna be the main hook of this? So we came up with uh, ready to break records in slab formwork production. We turned it into a question. Uh, so instead of just saying, hey, we're showing a new slab system, come see it at ConExpo, we, we, we wanted to kind of come up with a way to draw people in more. So there, there we go, ready to break records in slab former production. Um, then the next step would be, okay, think of some lows or challenges that that system or that service, whatever you're showing, is, is solving. You know, what, what are your customers' pain points that are going to be resolved because you're showing this product or service or solution at the show. Uh, so for us, uh, you know, the pain point was the current slab former products that are out there have high costs. There's a lot of pieces that get lost on site. This, what does this mean? Long production cycles, increased costs, and delays on in, in construction schedules. Uh, so then the third step is, okay, wh what's the high? How is your product or your service going to resolve this pain. Uh, so for us, okay, this new system, it, it's uh, an 8 by 8 system, it, which means there's a lot less posts, less reshoring, less crane picks. It's the largest grid, grid size uh, on the market. It's very easy to set up. There's only four main components. Um, you know, th there's this drop head feature that allows you to remove your joists and stringers early for fast cycling. Um, and then we have to think of, okay, what, what are we going to show at the booth so that we can communicate this? Uh, because it's easy to just, just, just kind of speak about it, but it's, it's you know, the show is very visual. Um, booth attendees are using all their sense, senses. They're listening. They're seeing things. So what are we going to do? Uh, what's going to be the interaction so that our guests do or remember this system that we're showing? Uh, so here we just write some notes here. Okay, well, we want, we want them to be able to kind of walk through it to experience that large grid size there. And we want them to get hands-on with it. Uh, so we're, we're having a, a, a section there where they can actually get a hammer and, and hit, hit the drop head that's a feature on our system to see how easy and, and effective it is. Um, and then we have another column about design notes. Or, or giveaways, like what else can we do at the show for our guests to really remember this, this product? So this could be 
anything. This could be, you know, some things we came up with. We're like, okay, well, we can make a big graphic on the floor to really show that eight by eight spacing and then show our competitor sizes. Um, you know, also you can integrate some fun things, which we'll, we'll talk about later, making it memorable, but we're going to have some kind of photo opportunity at this product. So people can walk away with uh, something in their hands to remember it by. And, you know, after they walked all these football fields of the show, uh, you know, maybe they'll still have this, uh, oh, hey, I went to the Doka booth. Uh, let me, let, let me, uh, let me look at that picture again. Just something to, um, walk away with so this this is kind of um, just the the, the plan the draft of your story here so before you start um, designing your booth and designing your communication plan uh, I like to use this kind of chart here um, to organize you know what are your focus areas and and how, how are you gonna how are you gonna draw people in with that focus? What's gonna be the hook? Why is this important? What is this gonna resolve? What should they do to really remember that? Uh, how can you design your, your booth around it? So this is kind of the homework that I feel is very important, um, you know, that you do before, before you're, you even, you know, once you register for that show, it's something kind of that's important to um, define. So um, you, then we have our focus areas. For, for us, for Con Expo, you know, our, again, our theme is more than formwork, and, and we, we, developed those, we developed three focus areas. So that was one example we just showed you on this lab, our slab formwork system, Superdex. And then we also decided to, to do this for two other areas, which are a big focus of ours, infrastructure and digital services for higher productivity. So all those three points should always come back to our main theme or concept, which is more than formwork. Um, it's important to define this. So you have a good outline of what your story and focus areas are going to be. And, uh, and then we use this as the basis for all of our communication. Uh, so, um, for, so the first point, which we talked about, SuperDeck, you know, uh, at, at our booth, we're going to do some um, live demonstrating of the system, and we're going to highlight those special features. Uh, for our second focus area, which is bridge solutions, uh, we have two, two new systems or two uh, systems that we're displaying there. Uh, and we have, a, we have developed a mascot that we've been using uh, previously on all of our communication, um, which, is a, which, which is a beaver. And uh, so we're going to have the mascot there just to kind of draw in some attention. And then digital job site technology is our third focus, which uh, we, we have a big booth and, um, you know, we're, we're going to use, we're going to use our second level of our booth to kind of demonstrate that topic there. As you can see, it, it can be complex. But it's important to go through these initial steps that Diana, that Diana has shown you. By charting out what you're trying to do, you can develop clear areas to focus on. And it's really important. So now that we have a solid foundation, it will help us to structure and communicate a story. OK, so the next topic is communication. When we talk about communication, the first place I like to start is with the home page, where you'll find all relevant information about your trade show displayed, including your theme and those focus areas. Hopefully, your company already has a website where you can just add this to. If not, consider making one. Uh, it's basically like a home page where you communicate everything going forward, um, even, even stuff that you would publish on social media or through an email blast should always be kind of found there on your home page. Um, here we also show a map we include on our, uh, as soon as you go to dokausa.com, the first thing you see is our, our, hey, we're exhibiting at Con Expo, and you see our theme, and you see our, those three focus areas there. And then you can get some more information, like our, we have a, a map there. Again, it's a huge show, so one very important thing to always communicate is where are you located uh, in this monster of a show. Uh, so we, we put a graphic there which shows the lot we're in and, and you know, shows you some of the booths we're next to. Uh, so we, we have this uh, on our website, and, and later we communicate in different ways too. Uh, another thing you'll notice on the site says DOCA Social Wall. Uh, on our website, 
we have this area where we integrate our social media posts. So if you have something that you're publishing on Facebook or on Instagram uh, that's related to, you know, Con Expo or to your trade show, it could automatically appear on your homepage as well. There's a lot of different um, services that, 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 that kind of offer that. It's basically a feed from what you're publishing on your social media platform uh, onto your website. So some other type of communication. Um, we, we've done uh, some printed mailings where we, we, we actually um, made an invitation with our theme and those three focus areas, and we, we mailed that out to all of our contacts, all of our customers in our CRM uh, program. Um, and we also do email blasts. So we, we do a couple scheduled email blasts, either focusing on one of those uh, three focus areas or, or a combination of them, or even just, uh, hey, here, don't forget, we're at Con Expo, come visit us. Um, and then we also prepare a press conference. And uh, sometimes some, some trade shows have big press conferences where you can schedule them, in a, you know, schedule them in advance and invite all the editors to come and talk about those booth highlights or those focus areas. Uh, an, another thing to, to, to add to that is, um, I, I see a lot uh, editors are also willing to come to your booth. Uh, so you can also schedule uh, almost like a booth, uh, booth press conference at, instead of, you know, having them all in a conference room. You can do kind of a one-on-one, -on -one, especially with some magazines or editors that are more favorable. Uh, I think inviting them to your booth and making it a little bit more personalized goes a long way. Uh, another form of communication is definitely social media. Um, we, we do some consistent social media uh, to, to communicate our presence at the show. Again, focusing on those three areas. So we're showing a new Slack system, Super Deck. We're showing um, Bridge Solutions, and we're showing some digital technology. So in our social media feeds, we schedule these three topics to appear you know, consistently. And it also, again, feeds into our website. So you have consistent messaging uh, from your invite to your website to your social media. Uh, we created some also video messages from our staff. Uh, it's nice to ask um, kind of the experts in, in your area about those focus areas to speak about them. So uh, we had our CEO uh, even do just a general message like, hey, we're exhibiting at Con Expo. We welcome you to come. We had our vice president of engineering talking about kind of those digital solutions, which is a focus area. Uh, we had another one of our VPs talking about that SuperDeck product that uh, we were that, that is new in a focus area. So these little video messages, I think, go a long way, and we get a lot of um, interaction with them on social media. I think it's more personalized. You have a, a face, a person talking about it. It's not just like, hey, come see our product. You actually have a person uh, inviting you and, and a face behind the company and, and the product. So uh, I feel like those are really, um, really great. Um, also on our social media, we, we consistently um, we consistently uh, share Con Expo's posts. So if they have something like, hey, there's only 10 days remaining uh, till Con Expo, we'll share that. Or, you know, register, register today and here's a discount code. Uh, you know, we share things like this. Um, another, another point there was consistent hashtag usage. So uh, we, we, we definitely, for each event we have or trade show, we develop a hashtag. Uh, so for Con Expo, for example, we have Doka at Con Expo, um, and, and we, we like to do this because if you click on that hashtag, and let's say you want to see more information, like, oh, hey, what else is Doka doing at Con Expo? If you click on that hashtag on any of the, the channels, you'll see all those posts and messages uh, pop up um, on, uh, related to, to that topic. Uh, another type of communication that I feel like sometimes uh, companies forget uh, is internally. You get so wrapped up and busy planning your trade show um, and, and all the different elements that go with it that, that you, you, you forget to, to inform the staff. Uh, you know, there's different company sizes, you know, here maybe um, some maybe only 10 employees, some maybe 1,000, uh, but uh, not everyone is participating in 
the show or the organization of it. And it's important that um, everyone you work with uh, kind of knows, like, hey, we're exhibiting at the show. You know, here's our theme and here's what we're, why we're there. Here's what we're going to show. Here's our focus areas. Uh, one, one thing we do here is we do these email signatures, uh, these banners. So we, we, we ask all of our employees um, to update their email signatures going out to external emails that has this little banner. And when you click on the banner, it goes to our homepage on our website, uh, our ConExpo homepage of our website that kind of gives you all the, all the information there. These are great ideas so far, Diana. I'm really enjoying them. Um, and next, we're going to be, go. We're going to focus on booth design. And booth design is about how now to bring people into your booth, and how the attendees can throw flow through your booth, and how your theme and focus is shown throughout the booth. It's a lot to do to get, because you have all the people, the noise, the colors going on. So, how do you get attention with all that going on? Diana will explain how she has done this. Thank you, Carrie. Um, you know, booth design, we can probably spend an hour just talking about booth design alone. So I tried to kind of just sum it up here into some few points where, where I thought was most important. Everyone has a different booth size going into a show. You can have a small 10 by 10 table. Uh, you can have a double decker. There's different booth sizes, but I think this kind of applies to all of that. Uh, you know, you're, you're, your theme there that we were talking about today and, and your focus areas are, are priority. So you want to make sure that uh, your logo is very visible and prominent there. Uh, and also your, your message, your marketing message or your marketing theme. Uh, so here was an example from Safety National uh, and there was their theme. They're the specialists in workers' compensation. That's what they were there for. That's what they wanted to communicate. And, uh, and, and it, it's really important that, uh, you know, wherever you're standing or coming from, those two elements are, are the most, like, visible, easy to see, and your message is very clear. Uh, and then also just some call to action. So uh, if you have those focus areas and you're displaying them, uh, each of those focus areas, you, sh you should have something there that's very clear for the person to do. I think when you, when uh, anyone goes to a trade show, it's a little bit awkward, right? It, you're not going to them often. Uh, it's awkward for the staff, you know, it's, it's different, it's a new environment. And for the people, uh, you know, you have people walking around all these booths and, and, you know, they enter your booth and it's sometimes like, what am I doing here? What should I do? Of course, your staff should attend to them, uh, but you should also have displays that make it easy for them to want to stay there, learn more, or engage with, with your system. Uh, so that was this kind of call to action. So our booth, um, you know, again, we have, we, we have a big booth at this show. Uh, it's a 50 by 50 uh, square foot booth, and it's, it's, it's two levels. We have a lot of systems. You know, we have a lot of formwork systems, climbing, bridge, safety, slabs, wall components, and we want to utilize the space effectively. So we, we do show a lot of different systems, but those three um, that, that we were discussing, uh, those were the three that we really highlight or, or focus. Uh, we try to keep an open, inviting atmosphere uh, at our booth and really draw attention to those, to those three areas. Uh, that's just kind of an example of uh, our rendering. Uh, you know, we have our logo there clearly. Uh, it's not our final. We're still working on, on the details there. Um, but we basically have a whole floor also dedicated to our third focus area, uh, which is this digital technology where we try to create more of a lounge atmosphere. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a couple points here on, on, on booth design. You know, again, your logo and key message theme should be very clear, visible, um, and always in all of your communication. Uh, there should always be like clear pathways, you know, a clear, clear way of getting around your booth to the different stations or uh, focus areas. 
clear signs and information boards, messaging. Uh, it sounds it sounds simple, but I, I remember walking into a lot of booths and, uh, you know, you, you don't even know. Sometimes, you know, you don't have the booth staff or there's no one there, and, and you really don't know what you're looking at. So just to have those good information boards or signs um, is, is very important. Um, you know, just remember that when, when you go into a booth or when you're designing a booth, uh, get booth visitors, they experience your booth using all their senses. senses. Uh, so they, they see they see what you're showing, they hear what your salesmen are going to be talking about, um, but, you know, they, they have their hands, it's good to get hands-on with systems. Um, and also scent, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe it's that popcorn or those fresh-baked cookies that are really pulling you into that, that booth. So just kind of uh, when you're designing your booth, making sure – you're using all senses to, to kind of think of that design um, is good. Uh, also creating an environment that makes guests want to stay and experience more. We created a kind of a lounge environment to communicate our um, digital services uh, because it's something we want them to sit there and, and open that app and really experience it. Uh, so, so in, in that case, we, we, we try to make it uh, comfortable and accommodating for them to stay. Uh, and then making it memorable and engaging, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, more on the, on the next slide. Uh, one other point I wanted to share is if, if you're able, if you're able to get a 3D rendering of your booth design, you know, maybe it's small, you know, maybe it's a 10 by 10 small booth and you, don't, you, you really don't see the need. But I think if you have a larger booth um, it, and, and, and your team's are capable or your booth builder's capable of giving a 3D design, this helps a lot uh, because you could really um, see how your stories come together, how, you know, those three focus areas are, um, are, are designed and displayed. You can easily make adjustments and say, hey, we could really use a banner there. I feel like there's no communication here. Or it's just something that's helped me um, to develop ideas on how to kind of set up the booth or the marketing and branding behind it when, when we see a, a 3D rendering. Now is the fun part. As you know, there's a lot of competition for attention at the trade show. Again, all the colors and noise. So how are you going to get some attention? Um, how do you make your booth so memorable that the attendees actually remember it after they go home? It takes being very creative, but it can be done. Diana has used some great tactics in the past, and she's going to tell you about it. But before we go there, Tony's going to give us one more poll to take. So, Tony, if you could bring up the last poll. Okay, please vote. Okay, we're getting there. How do you communicate your presence at the show? Is everybody done voting? Looks like it. Okay. We'll call that good. We have 67% saying we use a variety of methods, ads, social media, etc. We have 17% 70, say that we show up and talk to people who stop by, and 17%, 17% who says they email attendees ahead of time. Nobody says they hand out, just hand out cool freebies. Um, that's always what I remember at the show. So, okay, with that, we'll go on to, the next, to Diana's suggestions on how to be memorable at a show. You know, uh, emailing attendees and showing up and talking to them, and you know, th this is all this is this is all important, and and I think part of the building your story of you know of exhibiting at at a trade show. Um, but one of the things that is important is um, making it memorable. Uh, Carrie, you know what? I for some reason I don't have control of the PowerPoint anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't switch to this. Hi, um, we can see your screen. 
Yeah, for some reason I can't go to the next slide. Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so making it memorable. There's a lot of different things you can do at a trade show to make it more memorable beyond your products and services that you're exhibiting. Again, it's a huge show, and, you know, wh whoever's, whoever, well, this one is, and most of them are, but wh whoever's attending a trade show, they're walking through multiple booths, and uh, they're going to forget a lot of information uh, that was given or provided to them. But if you can do something to make it more memorable, one example I always love to talk about, if you have, if you know, JCB, they have huge trade show budgets, too, but they always put on a spectacular show. Uh, every time I go to a, uh, Con Expo, I always make it a point to go and see their show because they really, uh, they even build like a platform for, for audiences to, to, to watch uh, what they're, you know, to watch their show. And, and they incorporate their products or their focused products into that show. Uh, but what makes it memorable is the show. Either one year they had a violinist who came out and uh, were performing um, you know, and the, and their 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 trucks there were dancing, uh, dancing with the, with this music playing. It was really really incredible. Uh, but there's a lot of other things you can do uh, if you know maybe a show is out of out of the budget or, or some live entertainment. Um, you can do something more personalized. We saw, we've seen caricaturists uh, where people walk away with a painting of themselves uh, and and your logo on there. Or, you know, sometimes incorporating um, something that uh, may be popular right now, either on TV or, or just a, a theme. Like here, there was a Game of Thrones chair where, you know, you could have been uh, the king uh, at, at this booth and, and sit and take a picture um, uh, on the throne. So just something personalized or something that they can walk away mem that's memorable with, I think, is always um, a, a, a nice touch. Uh, we've seen also characters at booths or uh, mascots and uh, people take pictures with them and, you know, incorporate your logo in the back or, or your product that you're promoting. Um, sometimes we've seen live demonstrators that uh, anytime you put a mic on someone, uh, I, I believe it generates a crowd. Uh, you could have scheduled demonstrations, uh, either someone talking about a solution or service or, uh, or, or demonstrating your product or just talking about it. I feel like once you put that mic and you have that speaker on, uh, it, 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 uh, you know, some people will be there ahead of time ready, ready to hear what you're presenting, but just having that, that projection coming through a speaker and the mic makes people stop and, and come in and listen and hear, and hear more. Uh, some some other ideas or, or things we've seen to make it more memorable, uh, make it welcoming. You know, people too. If they're walking around the show all day. They they might be a little tired or or parched. So maybe offering some kind of beverage services at, at your booth is always a good idea. We've seen some uh, massage massagers at at at, um, at some booths, which which is a great idea. A lot of people are exhausted after walking around so much. Um, integrating some, uh, even though no one said giveaways uh, on, on the poll there, um, a, lo a lot of booths uh, or a lot of exhibitors, you know, they, they have certain giveaways. Uh, one, one thing we experienced early on is some people just want to come into your booth just for that hat or that pencil. They really could care less what you're offering. Uh, so to kind of minimize that, uh, we noticed if you integrate a game, um, you know, these generate lines sometimes at your booth, and it makes it look a little bit busier or more interesting. Uh, and, and that could be a way of, you know, offering a freebie or a giveaway instead of just handing it out, making, making some kind of interaction uh, to, to gain it. Uh, and also uh, social media. Um, a lot of, a lot of um, again, we have that, we had our booth theme also a hashtag, um, more than four more. Uh, so it's something we're planning on incorporating a lot at our uh, trade show at ConExpo. Uh, so just think about how can you incorporate social media uh, feed from your booth. Uh, I mean, how can you incorporate your, your booth and your theme and everything that's going on in your, on, on your show 
uh, on your social media. So we, we plan to share a lot of pictures of our booth guests uh, on our social media feed. Um, that also helps build followers and more interaction on your, on your platforms. Uh, so, so kind of just to summarize that, um, you know, every element of your booth and any pre-show marketing that you do should connect to these three components, your brand promise, your value proposition, and your value description. So everything you should you do should come back to those points. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's nice to have um, every piece of your display and any giveaway you have uh, should, should, should kind of tie into how you're providing value and should, come, should fall into your, your, your theme or your, um, your three focus areas. Um, some other ways we're highlighting this is, you know, we have a, we're planning on having this hospitality beverage bar on the main level. Uh, we're, we're, we, we have this prize wheel. So again, instead of just handing out a giveaway, usually this helps form a line and, and, you know, you have to spin a wheel to win something and, and the social media feed during, um, before and during, during the show. Uh, Follow-up, uh, so people will come to your booth and then walk into 100 other booths and go f home and forget nearly everything they saw except for those few booths that made it memorable. So how will you follow up with all the leads you captured at the show? Making sure your staff takes good notes on leads is very important. Um, make sure that you prioritize your leads after the show and make sure you reach out to them accordingly. So what we'd like to do is immediately after the show, we like to send a short and sweet thank you. Thank you for uh, visiting our booth. Maybe here's a link to some photos that we're taking at a booth. Maybe that person's looking for their picture and they want to see it, uh, you know, on your page or on your Facebook channel. Uh, so it's nice to kind of follow up with, you know, thanks for visiting us and here's, here's a link. Uh, and then, you know, after, maybe a week after the show about, we, we send uh, additional emails, you know, focusing on those three focus areas. Maybe, hey, you saw the Superdex system uh, at our booth and, you know, here's, here we're offering, we're having a special promotion, you know, we'd love for you to give it a try. Uh, and then just make sure to measure, measure your ROI so you know if you've done the right process. So uh, all those leads that you generated at the show, uh, what, what turned into business, what turned into some revenue for your company. And making sure that, you know, you, you get these leads into your CRM systems and making sure that your sales teams have the right, right tools so that they can continue telling that story uh, that you started with, with those focus areas and, and that theme. Uh, so just to summarize, here were the topics kind of we discussed today. Uh, you know, the, the story that you will create with a focused theme and those focused uh, areas by making an emotional, engaging, and memorable story will help in a success of a trade show. And, and I think it will really help you organize all your communication and your uh, product displays, and uh, it just it just kind of will help everything come together. Um, so, yeah. I'm Diana. Thank you so much for listening to me. This lasts about uh, 40, 45 minutes. I hope that I helped you gain, gain some new ideas that you can hopefully implement into your next event or trade show. Uh, and if you have any questions, I would love to take them at this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Diana, for this interesting presentation. If you have any questions, please type them um, on the chat box and uh, Diana and Carrie will answer those questions for us. Oh, I have a first question here for you. Um, when, uh, when you're creating your three focus points, how do you determine what to focus on? Do you zero in on, on new products or industry trends? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, this is something we, we meet with our team uh, to, to develop. And that, that, that is, we look, we look at our strategy, what's the company's strategy and what's their vision for, tw- for you know, the next years. And that's kind of how we developed our, our focus points for, for ConExpo. Uh, we, we met with our management team and, and, and we said, okay, we're, you know, wh- what's on, what's on our strategy? What's the plan? What are we focusing on? And then we bring in those elements into our booth and to our focus area. Uh, so you know th- th- those three uh, areas were were one of were were some of the top ones where we're you know there's a lot of revenue growth potential and um, and and they just so happen to be yes a new product a new product that we just um, are launching uh, another one was more of a sector uh, we're focusing on infrastructure a lot uh, so that was that became the, our second focus topic. And then also a third kind of new area for us that we went into is uh, digital technology. So we have a lot of new apps and uh, solutions for increasing productivity on job sites. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how we developed ours. So I think it's just meeting with your management, with your teams, looking at your company's strategy and direct, direction to be able to develop those focus areas. Thank you for that uh, answer. Uh, I have a second question here. How long do you use your theme and hashtag? For one trade show, for the whole year, what do you recommend? Oh, good question. So, um, you know, I, I don't think there's a one answer fits all uh, for, for this one. Uh, in, in our case, uh, we, we developed this theme um, we developed this theme a few years ago, you know, more than form work, and uh, we, we, we stuck to it, and it's, it's still part of our strategy, and, um, and, and so, so kind of we stuck to it. I think, um, to give you an example, uh, I, I was just at, at Balma in April, and we saw the Caterpillar booth, uh, and they had, a, they had a different theme than what they're having now at Con Expo. Uh, so, you know, Balma was just this year and Con Expo is, you know, they're, they're, it, it's been a year apart and, and they kind of totally changed their theme. And I guess that was part of their strategy. So, for example, at Balma, they had to rewrite the rules. And uh, now at Con Expo, we see their, 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 their theme is your work matters. Uh, for us, you know, we, we had a theme of more than form work and it's still something that's very, much um, accurate or a part of our strategy, so so we're we're keeping it. So I think it just depends on your your company's strategy and 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 kind of vision, what direction you're going into, that helps define uh, the the theme there. Uh, does that answer the question? I think I think that makes sense because you have to know what your company goals and and focus are. And keep in line with that. We have another question here. Um, how do you recommend that we promote these focus topics throughout our company, not just at the trade shows? Um, the focus topics, yeah. So uh, you know, so for us, for example, we have we have the three the three topics, and uh, throughout the year, uh, we we do different uh, activities in our calendar surrounding each of those topics. Uh, so, uh, for example. We, you know, one, one area we have is that super deck system, right? Uh, so, you know, after the show, what we do is a few things here. Uh, right after the show, those that were interested, that saw us at, at our booth and were interested in super deck, oh, we're going to send them content through marketing, um, email blast, and, and, and just through social media on that system, on that super deck system. We also prepare our sales team with the right tools. We equip them with the right tools to be able to communicate super deck through either product flyers or some uh, AR or VR models or some customer magazines. Um, customer testimonials go a long way. Uh, so we do scheduled activities right after the show for those that came to our booth to communicate each of these topics. But also in, in general, like not even talking about the show, you have those three focus areas and we make calendars uh, that, that focus on each of the topics throughout the year. So maybe the first quarter we're focusing on 
um, on this super DAC. And then, and when I say focusing, this means uh, campaigns, promotions, advertisements, social media, videos, creating tools for the sales staff. And then the following quarter, quarter two, maybe we focus on that second focus topic, uh, infrastructure. Um, you know, and this is also through different means, either, uh, you know, campaigns or special promotions or um, getting customer testimonials, sharing them on social media, maybe focusing on those exhibitors more that visited your booth and had a big interest in infrastructure. Maybe we're like really communicating with them a lot more on that topic. And then the third quarter, we focus on this third focus topic, digital, uh, with again, doing those same activities by promoting them. Uh, so it's just kind of, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do um, to promote those topics that you're showing at your booth, those focus topics. Uh, a after the show's done, there, there's a tremendous amount of activities you, you, can, you can do to keep promoting them. And that's, again, through, through social media, your website. It's just you've got to kind of make a plan there on kind of like you, we did a plan on how to, how to do a theme and um, focus areas. For a trade show, it's, okay, how are we going to now um, do a action plan for those three focus topics throughout the year on all of our uh, communication platforms? And to ensure that your employees are on track, it's just a matter of, it could be through employee newsletters, um, just basically internal communications to ensure that this month is you know, this is what we're focusing on or this quarter. So make sure when, if you are ever talking to a client, you realize that this is, this is how, what we are pushing right now. So it is internal communication. So the company as a whole is always looking at the same focus. Yeah, we like to send to our team here, hey, can you guys help us out here and communicate our presence at the show by updating your email signature? And, oh, by, like, by the way, you know, we're at the show. Here's what we're showing. Uh, here's what we're communicating. I think it's important to have everyone on your, on your team aware of, you know, what, what you're doing, what you're exhibiting, and, and what your communication is. They should be aware of your story so that they can retell it. We don't have any more questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add, uh, Diana or Carrie? Anything else you would think our uh, audience should know today, learn today? Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming and let them know that we will be sending them a link to the webinar if they would like to view it again. And in addition, there'll be a handout with the link. So, um, but I believe, unless there's more questions, I believe that's all we have for now. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, Diane and Carrie. And uh, this concludes uh, today's webinar presentation, and we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time.